الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى وسلم على من ارسل الله رحمه وهدايه ونورا للعالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا دائما متصلا الى يوم الدين All praises be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Lord of the worlds, and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last and the seal of all the prophets and messengers, and the master of all mankind, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family, companions, and upon whoever prophets. What says today, judgment? Brothers and sisters, we'll come back to today's lesson on the seerah, life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today, inshallah, we're going to highlight a very important topic, which is da'wah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in public. Da'wah in public. Because last lesson we have highlighted da'wah of the Prophet sallallahu in secret. And Brother Adam, we said, how many years did the Prophet sallallahu make da'wah in secret? Three years. Three years. The Prophet sallallahu made that right, made da'wah for three years in secret. So are you? The Prophet وسلم, used to gather he and his companions in a house of a companion. What is the name of that companion? So, Brother Shima, it's like that because they don't want to ask us. <laughs> no. Huh. Brother Sinali. What? No. Yeah. I don't remember, but I Yes. Yeah, excellent, Brother Sufyan. It's Al Arqam. Yeah, Al Arqam ibn Abi Al Arqam. Al Arqam ibn Abi Al Arqam. And he was 16 at the time. He was 16. Yeah, 16. Al Arqam's age was 16. One six. One six, yeah. So the Prophet used to gather and his companions at the house of Al Arqam ibn Abi Al Arqam. So this was the case of the Prophet. And by the way, the two Holomas Masjids. Who was the first woman to believe in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? No. So Brother Shimer is his hand. You know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lady Khadija. Lady Khadija, mother of the believers, Allah pleased with her. And Father of Inayah. Who was the first boy to believe in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And what is the kunya? What is the nickname of Ali? I told you. What is the nickname? <laughs> yeah, yeah. After, after, after the. Yeah, I told you that the Prophet ﷺ one day entered the masjid. Huh? The one who slept. Yeah, Abu Turab. Abu Turab. In English, the father of dust. Abu Turab, or the father of dust. So, Khadija Allah pleased with her was the first woman to believe in the Prophet وسلم, and Ali Allah pleased with her with him was the first boy to believe in the Prophet وسلم. What about the first man who believed in him? Adam. Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr. Allah pleased him. And this stage continued for three years as Adam said right now. Then, last, also last lesson we said that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the Prophet وسلم, to deliver the message to the people of Quraysh in public, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam climbed a mountain. What is the name of that mountain, Brother Sufyan? Sinali. Yes, yeah. Some scholars say that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam climbed the mountain of as safa Safa. Others say that the mountain of Abu Ubais. Abu Ubais. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to them, so this was the first, the first, very, the very first moment of delivering the message to the believers in Quraysh in public. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called upon the families, upon the clans of Quraysh, upon the families and the clans of Quraysh. All people of Banu Hashim, all people of Banu Umayyah, all people of Saul, all people of Saul, they gathered and stood before the Prophet And he said to them, what? If I told you that there are horses behind that mountain that are going to attack you right now, you don't believe me? They said, no, we would believe you. You are a Sadiq al-Ameen. You are the truthful and you are the honest. Then the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to them, I am the messenger of God to you. I am the messenger of God to you. 
from that moment on they started to to hurt and harm the Prophet وسلم, with any possible means available to them they used to harm him وسلم, they used to hurt him وسلم, along with his, with his believing companions along with his believing companions sometimes they call him وسلم, Majnoon Majnoon Mad or crazy Yeah This is in the Quran Allah SWT says In Surah Al-Hijj وقالوا, The disbelievers of Christ said Ya ayyuha alladhi nuzzila alayhi al-dik O oh you Upon whom the dik And what is a dik What is a dik The disbelievers once, once again pay more attention please Yeah brothers and sisters the disbelievers of Christ said to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O you, upon whom a dhikr has been sent down. What is a dhikr? No. No. Sinali. Brother Sufyan. It's the Quran. It's the Quran, yeah. A dhikr is another name for the Quran. Dhikr, like that. Like that, dhikr. So our Quran is called is called a dhikr. Quran is called a dhikr. And it's al furqan and it's al kitab All of these are names for the Quran. All of these are names for the Quran. So they said to him, Oh you upon whom the dhikr, the Quran has been sent down, you are mad. You are mad. So they verbally abuse him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sometimes they say that he is mad, other times say that he is a magician. A magician. Sometimes they accused him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, of telling lie, of telling lie. This is another a very important point. Before his da'wah, before his message, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, until he was forty, all the all the people of Christ, all the people of Christ, used to call him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the as-sadiq al-amin, the truthful, the honest. So why it's right now to call him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or accuse him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of stealing lie? Why? So they sometimes says so, magician is he is majnoon or mad, magician and telling lies. And they said that all the stories Muhammad is telling us about are legends. Are legends. What is the legend? What is the legend? Fake stories of the ancestors. Fake stories of the ancestors. Waqal ancestors. Waqalu asafiru al-awwalin aktafabah. They said that. Say that all what Muhammad told you about is some sort of asafir. Asafir means legends. Legends. L e g e n d s. L e g e n d s. Mean that fake stories that are not founded. Huh? And they accused him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that he was able to write, even though he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was neither able to write or read. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa taala in the Quran, in 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 so many positions in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa taala described him as al ummi as al ummi the unlettered prophet, the prophet who is neither able to read or to write, the prophet. That's why you still remember when. Jibreel came down upon him sallallahu alayhi wa in the first time. He said to him, what did Jibreel say to him? What was the response of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa replied? I cannot read. I cannot read. And I told you at the time that this was to prove to all people that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was not able, was not able at all to read or to write sallallahu alayhi wa So, sometimes they call him sallallahu alayhi wa mad or majnoon. Other times they call him magician, magician. Some other times he accused him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, of telling lies, even though themselves were fully aware that he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was a true messenger from God. Hmm? They themselves, they themselves, were fully aware 
fully realized that he وسلم, was a true messenger from God. And this is in the Quran. This is in the Quran. For example, brothers and sisters, and please be attention. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِي نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الذكر. And the disbelievers of Christ say to him, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Oh you, upon whom the Quran has been sent down. So you firmly believe, you said that. So you firmly believe that the Quran has been sent down upon him. So the question right now, who is the one who sent down the Quran upon him? So why didn't you believe in him? You got my point? Allah said in the Quran, وَقَالُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينُ زِيَعَيْدِكَ The disbelievers of Christ said to the Prophet, O oh you, Muhammad, you are the one upon whom the dhikr, the revelation, the Quran has been sent down. You are mad. So as you, long as you believe that the Quran has been revealed down, has been sent down upon him, why didn't you believe in him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So that's number one. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Az-Zukhruf, وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنُ عَلَىٰ رَجْلٍ مِنَ الْقَرْيَتَيْنَ عَظِيمٍ The disbelievers of Christ were speaking with each other and saying to each other, Oh, why was not that Quran, why hasn't that Quran been sent down upon one of the leaders of the two cities, Mecca and Ta'if, Mecca and Al-Ta'if. So also you believe that it is a Quran, you believe that it is a Quran, so why didn't you believe in him sallallahu alayhi wasallam? So, they used to hurt and harm him sallallahu alayhi wasallam with all the possible means available to them at that time. One day, Abu Jahl, who is Abu Jahl? No. So you, you should tell us about the uncle of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Abu Jahl is not his uncle. No. Yeah, Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab is the paternal uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who is Abu Jahl? Enemy. Yes, enemy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Or the enemy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And his name is Amr ibn Hisham. His name is Amr ibn Hisham. Abu Lahab one day said that if I see Muhammad prostrating beside the Kaaba, I would step over his head with my feet. To that extent. If I see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prostrating beside Kaaba, I would step over his head with my feet. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dead prostrate beside the Kaaba. And Abu Jah went to step over the head of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But what happened to Abu Jah? Yeah. He went away with horror. He was taken, he was very afraid. What happened to him? The disbelievers of Christ asked him, why didn't you step over the head of Muhammad as you promised, as you said? Why didn't you fulfill your word? Why didn't you keep your promise and step over Muhammad's head? He said, when I, I was about to do that, I found a trench of fire between me and him. I found a trench of fire between me and him. So. If he is armed, he would fall down on that trench. In another narration, he said that he found like a great, a great camel, a great camel. And he, if he is forward, if he is armed, that camel would snatch him. That camel would destroy him, would destroy him. That's why he went away in fear. That's to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to protect the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam day and night. Allah used to protect the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam day and night. Okay, so one day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was prostrating and praying beside Kaaba, was praying beside Kaaba. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his prostration, they brought something, you know, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, after slaughtering animals, after slaughtering animals, that stuff of, of stomach, bellies, and all of these things, they, the Prophet was prostrating like that, and they brought all of these filthy things and put them on the back of the Prophet Fatima Zahra, Allah please with her, came and removed all of that from his back, and she was very sad for that 
situation at that moment the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa favorite teacher the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said oh Allah destroy Abu Jahl ibn Hisham oh Allah destroy Shaybat ibn Rabi'ah oh Allah destroy Udbat ibn Rabi'ah oh Allah destroy Umayyat ibn Khal once again oh Allah kill destroy Udbat ibn Rabi'ah O oh Allah, destroy Abu Jahl ibn Hisham. O oh Allah, destroy Shaybat ibn Rabi'ah. O oh Allah, destroy or kill Udbat ibn Rabi'ah. You know? All of these people, all of these people were killed. When? Excellent. In the Battle of Badr. All the people, the Prophet sallallahu mentioned their names in his supplication were killed in the Battle of Badr. That's, you know, you should know that the supplication of the prophets is accepted, is answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The supplication of the prophets against their people is accepted at all. That's why when Nuh alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy his people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his call. And when uh, 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 Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and Prophet Salih and Prophet Hud made supplication against their people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made supplication against those certain persons, those certain figures. Why? Because they hurt him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam very severely. So those people were killed in the battle of Badr. Concerning the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'll, I'll just give you a, a, a brief examples and few examples. You know, who is the first person to be murdered? You know the meaning of the word murdered? In Islam. What? Yeah, murdered. Murdered. Died in the cause of Allah. Who was the first person to die in the cause of Allah? The first person, yeah. Brother Shima wa Tilas. <laughs> so, Brother Sufyan. Yeah. Huh? Ah, the first Muslim person to die in the cause of Allah. No. So it was I don't remember one story where there were two people that they, they were saying to them, uh this is Muhammad over the It's a woman. Yeah. She's a woman. Uh, two persons. Yeah. That is it was that two persons where they say say yeah, that you, you you disbelieve in, in Muhammad and then they, they didn't ask us to say it. Yeah. Who, who 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 what what's her name? Don't forget that name, please. Huh? Sumayya. Who is Sumayya? Sumayya, mother of Ammar ibn Yasir. Sumayya, mother of Ammar ibn Yasir. This woman was the first one to die in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They used to punish her so severely that she used to faint. She used to lose consciousness. She used to punish her and hurt her. She, her husband and her son, Ammar. He, she, her husband and her son, Ammar. If you still remember Abu Jahl, Abu Jahl threw her with a sparrow. And that sparrow came on that position and she died. So she was the first person to die in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to pass by them, he وسلم, at the time was not ordered to fight against them. The Muslims were still few. He وسلم, couldn't support them. Couldn't do, do them anything. He وسلم, used to say to them, Sabran ala yasir, inna mawidakum jannah. Be patient, people, family of Yasir, Allah promises you Jannah. This is all what the Prophet وسلم, could say to them at that time. Be patient, family of Yasir, you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises you with Jannah. Brothers and sisters, the punishment and the, the, the torture of the disbelievers of Christ to the Muslims were very severe that one day Ammar, son of Sumayya, Ammar, so Sumayya, Ammar, so it is Ammar ibn Yasir. So what is the name of his father? Yasir, yes. Ammar, hmm? that, that man, they used to banish him, they used to beat him very severely to the extent that they asked him 
to verbally abuse the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he did. But he did because he wasn't able to endure the punishment. And they said to him, abuse Muhammad and we will we'll release you. Abuse Muhammad and we will release you. And he did. Because he wasn't able anymore to endure the punishment. To endure the torture of the believers of Christ. It is just enough to know that Umayyah ibn Khalaf. Umayyah ibn Khalaf used to bring Bilal and put him in the desert of Mecca and put a very large stone on his chest and ordering him to disbelieve in Muhammad. What was the reply of Bilal? Ahadun Ahad. What is the meaning of that word? Allah is one. Allah is one. Allah is one. Subhanallah. Glory to Allah. Bilal killed Umayyah ibn Khalaf in the battle of Badr. Bilal? Who bought Bilal? Who bought him? Who bought Bilal? Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr bought Bilal and released him for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Umar used to say, Abu ba Bilal Sayyiduna wa a'taqahu Sayyiduna. Meaning that Bilal is our master and was released by our master. Bilal is, Bilal is the mu'adhim of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Huh? Bilal is our master and was released, was set free by our master. But the, the, the one who bought Bilal and set him free for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Abu Bakr. Is Abu Bakr. So, they asked Ammar and said to him, if you abused Muhammad, we would leave you free. He did. And when he when he thought of what he did, he became so angry, so sad, that he turned it into a disbeliever. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed and sent down a verse in the Quran that assures him and that clearly indicates that he is not a disbeliever. Why? Because he has abused the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam out of the of fear of the disbelievers of Quraysh. He was forced to do that. Allah says, من كفر بالله بعد إيمانه إلا من أكره وقلبه مطمئن بالإيمان ولكن من شرح بالكفر صدرا فعليه غضب من الله. Very simply, this verse means that Amari are still a believer. Why? Because you had abused the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم while being forced to do so. While being forced to do so. So they used to hurt the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and his companions with all the means available to them. Umayyah. Umayyah. Yes. When it was, some scholars say, the seventh, seventh year of Hijrah, of the Ba'tha, the Prophet ﷺ ordered them a very important thing to do. He ﷺ told them to go to, to migrate to Habasha, to migrate to today's Ethiopia. Today's Ethiopia. It's called Abyssinia. Yeah, Abyssinia. Yeah, he sallallahu alaihi wasallam ordered them to migrate to Abyssinia, and he sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them that the king of Abyssinia is a very just person, and he does not commit any wrong against anybody. So, what was the name of the king of Abyssinia? Excellent, but here is the point. No, yeah, Najashi, but a Najashi is not the name. Nagashi like that. Nagashi. If a title is a title, yeah, yeah. Refer, ref, referring to referring to uh, the kings of Ethiopia or Ethiopia or Abyssinia. His name is Ashama. Ashama, like that. Ashama. I'll finish with that point and tell you that at Nagashi Ashama received the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and dealt with them very kindly and very justly and he offered them great support and let them worship Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala alone and what was the religion of al Najashi Ashama? He was a Christian. He was a Christian. And he died as a Muslim or as a Kafir? He was a Muslim. He died as a Muslim. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the Muslims that he died in the ninth year of Hijrah after the Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina. 
Then fear of Hijrah. And Najashi Ashama, king of Habasha of Ethiopia, died. And the Prophet asking the companions to offer the funeral prayer over him. The Prophet was in Medina. That's why scholars say that it is allowed, it's permissible for Muslims to make Salatul Ghaib. What's Salatul Ghaib? Yeah, if somebody died, he passed away in any other place, and you couldn't attend, you couldn't attend uh, offering the funeral prayer on him, you can do it wherever you are. You can do it wherever you are. So that's for this lesson, inshallah, I mean. And the point is that all of these hardships, all of these hardships used to make the Muslim or the believers grow very strong and stay fast on their Islam and their religion. That's why, if you still remember, I told you yesterday and so many times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we, told, we tell you about the stories of the prophets and messengers for you to make your heart stay fast. To make your heart stay fast. So you go ahead. No, 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 no. He was Christian when the companions migrated to him. But later on, he embraced Islam. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Any questions? Yes. He was from the same tribe. Brother Shima, this is a very important point. Which is that? Quraysh is the tribe. Right? right? And from this tribe, we have what's called the clans. Clans means big families. That's it. Yeah, he, you can't say he is cousin. Cousin, but not his uncle. Because his uncle, his paternal uncle is Abu Talib, is Al Abbas, is Abdul Uzza, Abu Lahab, Al Harith, etc. Yeah. Hmm. Any other questions? Do you have any questions on the Facebook page? Yes. Lal Al Habashi, from Abyssinia, Ethiopia. Yeah. And Ethiopia at the time was a very large kingdom. Mm -hmm. Yes. How did uh, Muhammad get abused? The believers of Christ used to abuse him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. No, uh, I think the people that people that verbally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like he's mad, like he's crazy, like he's magician, less stealing lies, something like that. Okay? Assalamu alaikum You should memorize the names. These days, you should memorize these names. <laughs>